Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 157. This episode is with the delightful Earl T. Kim. You might know him best as the man behind Norio from Ghosts of Tsushima, or as the writer, director, and star of the short film Han. He's fantastic. We talk about his history with glitter, that'll make more sense in a minute, Uh, going to school all over the place, how an instructor changed his life, the real story of how he got into acting, auditioning for a teacher in Russia, his beautiful short film Han, getting the part of Norio, how his real-life experiences actually influenced his performance, and so much more. Earl is incredible. You are in for a treat. So, let's just jump right into this. Please enjoy this episode of the Interesting Podcast, number 157, with Earl T. Kim. Theme song time. Yes, it has. It. Uh, uh, I had a. I had a emergency callback this morning that did. Yeah. I did not. Uh, great news, uh, but also one of those things where it's like the best worst news to get. Where it's like, get a phone call. Hey, where can you? Where are you? And can you be here in an hour? Oh, uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. Uh, remember that thing you did like weeks ago? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're uh, free. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was a lot of, I mean, thank God, serendipity and, you know, things moving around. Thank you so much for being understanding. Of course, um, of yeah, course. But it's, it, yeah, it's just all, I don't know. It's that thing of like, Ugh. well, I guess we're still, I'll, I guess this is a welcome back to, all right, remember how things were before pandemic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, dude. Uh, do you handle that well? Because I find I don't. Oh, uh, uh, yes and no. I think in some, sometimes I, it's only happened a couple times for me yeah. as far as like, uh, we need you now. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> can you be here? Uh, but sure. you know, I feel like it's partly, it, it reminds me of like sort of when I was younger and when I would audition right. sort of like that, that nervous energy and uncertainty. And now I feel like it's, it's kind of a, I don't know. I, I I'm, I welcome it in a way where it's like, oh man, I haven't felt that weird about an audition before. Right. <laughs> like it's been a couple, of, like, I mean, now it's like, it's been ages, but sure. like, it was just one of those things where it's like, what you mean? I don't have to, I don't, I don't have like a whole night to take 4,000 takes and then <laughs> finally settle on one where I'm like, oh, well, I could have done it. Maybe, maybe the light could have been a little, you know, after all of that, you know, where, as opposed to like, no, we need you now. And you get like, wants to do it in front of an actual person (laughs) it's like oh oh we're back to that old hat right right (laughs) adrenaline i remember you (laughs) yeah yeah that's insane yeah yeah yeah. good morning yeah it was definitely one of those like good morning it's a tuesday (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah yeah that's true i i I get so stressed out when they're like you have an audition tomorrow i'm like oh Oh man. Okay. Wow. Okay. Wow. Oh, you couldn't even uh, give me a weekend. Thanks. Yeah, nothing. I know for a fact you guys knew this was coming. Come on. <laughs> True. Yeah. Oh. It's wild. It's such a, it's such a crazy race. But yeah, yes. it's, you know, and then now it was sort of that, like that happened in the morning. And so everything sort of pushed back, uh, like uh, sure. about an hour, hour and a half. And so I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm just gonna play catch up and do things, but it's been good because Tuesdays. Okay, so Tuesdays are normally my. Um, this is a little bit of insight into yeah Earl's weekly schedule. Grant. I'm in. But like I'm in. Um, so like Mondays are usually my day off because uh, theater. Uh, yeah, it's Called a it. hold over, <laughs> hold over. We like even with with streaming because uh, both Daisuke uh, Tsuji who plays. Jin Sakai in Ghost of Tsushima. Oh yeah, we we are we're, we've been streaming together as sort of a, a thing and it's to great. do <laughs> amidst I love the it. pandemic. Oh, thank you. But um, 
with that, it's been like, uh, all right, we're going to some traditions must not die, and we'll keep this. <laughs> we'll keep this Monday dark day thing going, even though the internet has no dark days. Right. And <laughs> the uncultured <laughs> swine that it is. <laughs> um, but it was sort of that thing where, like, okay, Monday, Monday's the thing we could do. And then yesterday, everything went wonky because oh, it's no. four twenty. Yeah, but of like, course. you know, but of like course. in the best ways, in the best ways possible, where it's Good. like all like my friends who are like, oh, we're going to meet up and do a thing. It's like, ah, oh, that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That'll like, work. Yeah, we can, it was we can of, go light. We can go yeah, light for a Monday. Yesterday was sort of like, a, did you make any sort of like vaguely friendly professional plans with people that you <laughs> enjoy? But yeah, probably not happening because everyone's just high. Right. Don't get mad about it. It's fine. You know, like, that's all right. That's right. Yeah. It just means the barriers are down. Conditions yeah, are perfect. So, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and so today on uh, Wednesday, everything decided to be like, all right, well, it's kind of technically your Monday now because, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because Monday wasn't really anything. And then Tuesday was 420. And now you're like, okay, well, I, I need to do things and be an right. adult and be in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the list is still there. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then it was like, nope, nope, nope. You have a callback. I was like, oh, oh, okay. This is great. Uh, on top of all of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's throw something that has a very short time window in the midst of this and yeah. go. <laughs> yeah but again again it's uh it's the happiest problem to have of course of course know. that's the give or, and take or that's, that's what works. we that's that's what we tell ourselves yeah exactly <laughs> we gotta sleep somehow <laughs> yeah yeah uh-huh this, totally. this tiny bit of adrenaline that i, I, I love it <laughs> <laughs> yes as you're crying, it's so good. It's, it's so the good. best. I this like is it, why man. this is everything I've ever yeah. wanted. <laughs> just, I chose this. Yeah. <laughs> Who we? And then my therapist has a talk with me. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of it. That's the stew that mm -hmm. is the life. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's incredible. You're you're in LA, right? Yes, I am. Right I on, am. Right on. You're not from LA though. Oh, God, no. <laughs> yeah, nobody is. Nobody's actually, everyone's transports. <laughs> well, okay, so that's the thing. Like, most every single one of my friends that are Angelinos, like, born and mm -hmm. bred, like, raised, want nothing to do with the industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes or, sense. Or are, like, are, like, ascended ascendant children of scions upon scions who are like uh, of course oh red the industry lives in my body i uh, i, I right. live free <laughs> like it's within my bloodstream you know it's like those are my two like angelino friends either yeah. they are like the most connected human beings i have ever encountered and <laughs> and basically avoid being in public with them because they are we literally can't do anything without walking five feet and being like oh my god what's up my right. god, <laughs> hey. like or it's my friends who are like Ugh. I just want a degree in comparative literature and I, you know, like, <laughs> I just want to watch my baseball games in peace with all these right. or it's not bothering me like <laughs> so it's 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 very funny I, I I love my Angelinos but yeah it, it does seem like everyone I meet is a transplant yeah yeah I live in Florida it's the same thing nobody uh -huh. my wife is born here but mm -hmm. nobody else I know everyone else is from somewhere else I'm like yeah I, yeah I I've not been to Florida in a very long time. It's hot. I will see. <laughs> I've always wanted to go because um, fest happens in Florida. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and I am a I am a oh, God. I am a dirty punk kid who somehow yeah. grew up kind of uh, ish, um, but managed <laughs> to make I don't know, managed to make some better than poor choices and managed to end up being in this weird path of being an actor. Sure. There's still actor. time. There's still but, time. I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I think, uh, you know, I just, yeah. Fest is always been a play. And uh, so many of my friends, like, it's Fest has been like a yearly pilgrimage that Hell everyone yeah. goes to and everyone, they love the punk rock music. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, of course. But yeah, yeah. It's It's been one of those things where, like, the last time I was in Florida, I was performing it. Disney World with the well. with my with my with my youth musical theater group at ah. Epcot Center at the Americana Stage. Pinkies up, when I was Sixteen years old. <laughs> Good God, yeah, no, it was it was one of those things where it was like, all right, do you, are you gonna keep 
are you going to keep being an angsty shitty kid or are you going to do more <laughs> theater? But I want to do both. Right. But, all right. Well, right. No. <laughs> but then you have the to spirit leave. fingers got me. <laughs> <laughs> As they do. As they do. <laughs> Once you let the jazz hands in, Earl, it's over. I know. It's just not It's not even one jazz hand. Yeah. No, but no, no. It, <laughs> it's it, it, I, I tried a single jazz finger and it just took over. <laughs> It's like glitter, you know, it's just <laughs> it's true. Oh, man. So I used to fun fact, random, random fun fact. Please. I used to work at uh, during college, during university. Uh, I worked at a store called Lush. Oh, okay. I don't know if you, it's, it's a cosmetic a store makeup. like a, yeah. yeah, it's like a soaps, bath bombs, all that stuff. They right. have a lot. They have a lot of shit with glitter on it. Really? That, like bath bombs and like yeah so they have all these things that are like specifically like super glittery because you know who doesn't well, i mean i certainly don't sure but, you know if you're a <laughs> if you're a young femme individual who loves sparkles and wants sure. to you know partake in pampering yourself in a home spa treatment then yeah i could imagine They're there for you sparkles could be a thing but anyways it was my my manager took an absolute level like like devilish level of delight <laughs> whenever we would get the shipment of the glitter things oh, no. she would give them all to me <laughs> because i because i would complain the loudest and just talk enormous amounts of shit about how much i hated these glitter glitter bath bombs and how awful i thought these glitter bubble, bubble bars were I'd just be sitting there in the corner just like and you know because of the, the way lush sort of presents all the everything sort of gets stacked like it's like cakes and cupcakes and we have to do like little sure. displays and things so it's literally just like it would i would i would come out of the store just covered in glitter and i <laughs> i hated it so much and and so like years later years 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 later um uh the person i was dating <laughs> happened to be a uh, a primary school teacher oh and, and and at this point uh this primary school teacher was bringing home a bunch of work to grade i don't know how you can grade like art projects made by six-year-olds <laughs> and like not i don't know what metric Carefully. was being used. yeah exactly <laughs> but, like it was one of those things where like so the 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 box the, the box the presentation box that had all of the art projects was in it and then uh it basically got knocked over um and all of this glitter oh, no. came pouring out and i had this like <laughs> insane weird flashback of like oh my god i'm at the store and i'm going to get crushed by bubble <laughs> bars and glitter bars and they're just going to kill me and this glitter is never going to get i'm i'm going to be covered in glitter for the rest of my life <laughs> um but yeah it's still uh, glitter just it it stays i feel like i just it's still like there. It's, yeah, I like it's it probably is still yeah. so I, I have some of that glitter somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> like I bet you like I and don't worry, like I have cleaned thoroughly. Doesn't matter. But I bet you it's still there somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, um, glitter, glitter trauma. That's, that's so uh, funny. That's, it, uh, that's a thing. That sounds through. counterintuitive to have a soap <laughs> that has glitter in it because glitter that's never some, comes off. And a soap is meant people, to get it. Some people love that. They just love there. that stuff. It's like in their pores. Yeah, like, this I had a is me. I had a girl who uh, a, a good friend of mine actually, who we uh, did our undergrad training together. Um, we were right the on. same uh, BFA program, and love her, fantastic performer. I think she's now a uh, like a. Uh, her name is Kimmy Cunningham. She, I believe, still works at NYU, but she's like an incredible like sound engineer and like does these like oh, really right cool like like audio performances and things um but i love kimmy bless her to a million pieces she is and i to her credit she still is she was and she still is the woman who uh you know has glitter just on her person just like so, but it's like <laughs> on hand that, always yeah but like like on her but also like on her body in that like weird way where like if you catch it like if you look at her out of the corner of your eye you're like are you an elf are right. you magical <laughs> there is some like this is a fairy. yeah like like and it's 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 that like it's not you know like like bam glitter everywhere it's just like <laughs> sure. A bit of like iridescent sheen sort of put on in a place Ooh. where you're just like, I can't stop staring at you, 
because right. your face is just like weirdly glowy and then it would be like we, <laughs> and then it would be that thing where it would be like in you know undergrad feel your bodies and feel yourselves and learn uh-huh. how to be a person like rolling around on the floor and then it would always be like okay and now we're going to be doing some contact improv and weight sharing yeah. and lifting and then it's like oh Kimmy's been on me because we'd all be <laughs> we'd be in all black and then it'd be just like a little smear like a like a like an iridescent smear just like enough. along the side of your butt or something and be like that's where Kimmy's face was great <laughs> she left her mark you know? I, yeah and it was one of those things where i was like all right it's the only instance where someone had, like where i'll have someone's glitter on me and i won't be totally weirded out because it's theater school that's right <laughs> that's right it's part of it this is the experience uh, <laughs> you know that's a choice though that i respect there's like you know carrie fisher used to carry yeah. around a little thing of glitter everywhere and she like put it under her eyes and I she would her. give it to people I oh love man! Her. Same. Oh, God bless. Like, Same. also, can you imagine being the asshole who turns Carrie Fisher's glitter down? Right. <laughs> like, Dude. who does that? Who I... would have done that? Like, <laughs> no, babe. Sorry. Uh, mm, I think no, I'm good. I don't uh, want the no, star no, glitter. No, no, uh, no thanks, Miss Princess Leia Organa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, uh, General uh, General Organa. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, whatever your name is, you know, I'm not really into this whole thing. Yeah, no, why are you here, sir? <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> the lady offered you glitter, sir. That's right. You put it on. You put it on for the rebellion. <laughs> oh, I, man. you know what? I almost knocked over her drink once. <gasps> What? Yeah, yeah. I, I met her at a convention oh and God. I had this Star Wars poster that I had made and I get autographs and I collect them because I like Star Wars. And uh, I she too, understandable. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so I was waiting in line for this really long time and she wasn't feeling that good that day. So what she would do is she had her feet up on the chair and then mm-hmm. she would take the item that you want signed and then put it on her knees and then sign it and give it back to you. I was like, all right, uh-huh. cool. But when you have a poster, it's rolled up, <laughs> you know? So, you know, (laughs) conditions are perfect. And and so you have to hold one side of it. And then I hold the other side. And normally you would just put it over the table. But because her knees are up and she's signing on the other side of her knees, it complicates things a little bit. And me, Mm -hmm. being the genius that I am, I had a backpack on, but only one strap. Oh, no. Again, conditions are perfect. (laughs) Oh, God. So I'm holding one side and she's pulling the other side over her knees and she signs it. And right when she gets done, my book bag falls over onto soom, the table. Soom, soom. And it, yeah. Oh, is, God. And I'm, I'm like imagining it's happening I, in dude, slow motion. Just I like, still have nightmares of Carrie Fisher saying, watch the Coke. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. I'd, you know what? I would eat glitter to take that away. <laughs> oh. But hey, you know, like you, you had, you had a watch the Coke moment. That's Jerry right. Fisher. Like, That's right. It's, uh, again, it's that thing of like, well, you know, it's something. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> the, the 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 bizarre sequence of events for you to have happened, you know, yep. in the universe to get you that. Watch the coke. <laughs> yep, yeah. <laughs> hey, scars are cool. You know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, also, I mean, it's a Carrie Fisher scar, so like, really, you know, sad. I think so. It's glittery <laughs> in Beautiful. my mind. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, man. I, I did huh. notice you said university in primary school that yes. those are not uh, American terms. So where did you go oh. to school? Oh, um, uh, I i am a weird nomad Good. kid. Yes. Um, I'm automatically <laughs> even more interested. <laughs> so I was born in Chicago because okay. that's I'm a I'm a Chicagoan by sure. by birth. Um, Been there a few go, times. Good go stuff Cubs. going on. Go yeah. Sox too, but I'm more of a Cubs kid just because they Why not? They're, they're they're sadder. Yeah, <laughs> they, yeah. Have, they have a sadder <laughs> story. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> <true>. <laughs> it was 2017. I had a lot of tears. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, fair. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Chicago is sort of where I, I I'm from. My parents are Korean. Cool. Um, but and so I I lived there for a short while when I was younger. Oh, as well. um, nice. Even though I was born in Korea, and uh, I, I have a bunch of family sort of spread about, like in Canada, and then uh, I used to have family in Ireland. 
Oh, wow. Uh, and in Korea. And yeah, so I, uh, I did a bit of, I did quite a bit of uh, nomadic, uh, just existing as a youngin. And Good. then um, uh, when I finished, I basically did uh, some high school in Ireland. Um, Dude. Yeah, I which love is quite, Ireland. Uh, oh, I love it's my, it's Ireland. my favorite place in the world. Lovely. Oh gosh, it's yeah. great. I mean, it's also been it's been oh gosh, it's been it's been about a decade since I've been back, so it's probably changed quite a bit. Sure, um, <laughs> I was there uh, three years ago. Still, awesome. oh really? Can confirm. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> Still Where'd you go? Everywhere. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> like the whole island. Dude, landed in Dublin. What took the road all the way to Port McGee on the other coast, up mm-hmm. to Galway, into Donegal, nice. Belfast, oh, Donegal's back to lovely. Dublin. Oh. Love it. Love all Galway's of it. Always lovely. Galway, 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 Dublin. Uh, Donegal are, are really, really great. All of it. Love oh. it. Love it. It's beautiful. Did you ever get north? Oh, yeah. I, like, all the way to Giants Causeway, oh. Belfast. Like, oh, I saw Causeway. all of it. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's the way to do it. Like, how long did you, how long were you there? You will not believe this. Like, nine days this is a story of a yeah <laughs> trip yeah. yeah dang i wasn't nine days <laughs> wow that must have been Dude, i mean it, uh, let's I not lie it's a small <laughs> island like you can you can you can circumnavigate if you were determined to you can circumnavigate that island like in a day definitely if you wanted to <laughs> like it's a wee <laughs> island <laughs> yes yes but oh man, did I squeeze every bit I could out of it? Yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> I was gonna say like, oh, you must have been there for three weeks. Like, oh, you must have, you oh, know, no, like, no. oh, I had stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just... <laughs> of course. Oh yeah. Beautiful. So, I, I lived in Ireland for a bit. Um, Hell yeah. And in the UK, I, I lived in Australia as well. Um, Dude. Yeah, I'm a bit of a again weird gypsy nomad. I love uh, it. Uh, it's the other side of the planet. Yeah, I mean, those, that was all stuff like um, uh, right after finishing uh, university, I ended up, uh, I got in, there's a, there's a theater company in Australia and based in Brisbane called Zen Zenzo Physical Theater. That's they are, amazing. Uh, they ha- and they, I don't know if they still have it. I think they, it's been a while. The company's been around for uh, about 20, 30 years now. Oh, cool. But uh, in Australia and sort of, in that side of the world, they're uh, kind of known as one of the uh, preeminent uh, theater companies that sort of practices uh, a couple of different sort of devising and theatrical techniques, namely uh, the viewpoints. Oh, interesting. Uh, the Suzuki method of actor training and uh, a Japanese postmodern dance form called Buto. Ooh. Uh, and so, interestingly enough, the crazy weird uh hippie university that i graduated from uh for undergrad uh in boulder colorado of all places oh sweet uh, it's called naropa university um it was founded in the 70s by a tibetan buddhist monk and alan ginsberg the beat poet dude what yeah it's a very strange place and a very wonderful magical place as well um but it's a, a weird university that uh came into existence because uh a lot of these sort of scholars and writers and and uh yeah just thinkers at the time were trying to incorporate eastern philosophy and um buddhist studies into the higher tertiary education sure um and so it yeah the 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 curriculum of the university sort of centers it originally started off as uh it was just a graduate school about like for like psychology and religious studies and writing those are like the only things that they offered degrees in sure and then as the years went by uh they uh, through the beats and through sort of postmodern art and dance and theater and music they started attracting all of these sort of really wild artists to this you know crazy little mountain town yeah. Boulder, Colorado yeah. um, and so yeah it, it has this really rich uh, interesting sort of legacy within the performing arts world um, uh, and yeah so they they have they have this crazy training program or they don't anymore it's very very sad oh, no. um, 
the university went through a bunch of scandals, uh, ah. especially in like, so 2015 or 14, they got um, one of someone who worked in the, uh, the administration office got caught by the FBI oh, uh, no. embezzling like hundreds of oh, thousands no. of university funds. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's really messed up. Ooh. Like, like it was a whole thing. Like it, yeah. It, it, yeah, there was all sorts of just bad, bad press. And then it also got connected that the, the former president, like who oh, no. most likely knew about it and it's some, you know, like was connected to sort of all sorts of other really just unfortunate things. Um, but again, it's it's that thing of, of I don't know, the, the organization itself is, you know, I think when it first started and the heart is was there sort of about transforming education and, and things like, cause like, okay, so just to give an example, the, the curriculum of, of the programs, um, regardless of what degree program you're in, if you're doing an undergraduate course, you are required to take um, either Tai Chi, Aikido, oh. uh, yoga, or um, basically some other, uh, you basically are, are uh, or uh, you, there's required meditation practicums, there are required uh, sort of uh, physical uh, practice, uh, components. Sure. So you, in order to graduate, it's like a, you do like a minimum of three semesters of either Tai Chi or yoga or, or uh, Aikido. And they are like a part of your sort of required class list of things. Sure. And they're about, you know, it, it's about, uh, you also have to, to meditate and, you know, do it's, it's, it tries, I think in, in, for the most part, at least in my experience, the, the process is very sort of secular Buddhist. It's not sure. too um, like esoteric and religiony. It's more just sort of like sure. spiritual and philo philosophically sort of looking at what happens with consciousness and thought and right, mind yeah. and being. Um, <laughs> and so more. it's sort of, yeah, it's sort of, it asks uh, their, you know, students to, to incorporate those practices into the academic rigor that they're asked to present with you know your regular slew of papers and research and blah 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 right um and then you know the other sort of hallmark of the course of the of the school is that there aren't really finals per se oh um so the way that the regular academic courses end is that you have what's known as a warrior's exam which sounds oh. really intense. It sounds like <laughs> it's totally a fight to the death. In the world. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's basically essentially the way that it works is that it's a it's like a panel. Oh. Uh, that you have with your professor uh, on the day of finals, and every student has it. Um, and you and the professor of the course have basically like a half hour plus dialogue about the things that you've covered in class or about a specific topic within the things that have been covered in the course. And while this dialogue with the student and the professor happens, the rest of the class observes. Interesting. And they serve as sort of like a panel. So each student is, is essentially a, a, an adjudicator and like everyone oh. sort of gets in on this like uh, academic process, which I find really, really fascinating and, and really, really great, where it also allows for like situations where if, say, uh, uh, someone is giving an answer that might not be uh, exactly sort of word for word satisfactory, if that's not the exact sure. definition that someone was looking for, then uh, another student say if they understand or know or if they get the kind uh, understand that there's a question that where there's not being a connection made the mm -hmm. another person that's in in the classroom that's a part of you know because everyone's a part of the warrior exam is right. allowed to sort of be like hey could you reiterate something like this or get some clarification points and sort of it's it's like a I, I don't know it's level. yeah it's like a weird um uh, like a lifeline kind of yeah. <laughs> not, not like it's like who wants to be a millionaire with grades, sure but like to a certain extent it, it allows for sort of the context of which where that student who's being examined at that point like where they stand sort of in relationship not just to the professor or tutor 
uh, right. but also with um, the rest of the class, because sort of understanding that that again, it's 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 this idea that's that's pulling away harshly from the banking model and moving more towards uh, the discourse model of education. Right. Um, banking model is very sort of uh, like and like Ferrer and Boal. Sorry, I'm going to talk about like yeah, please. But like Ferrer and Boal, we'll talk about like the banking model is the sort of traditional academic system that we have, where you have a a professor or a, a teacher or an auteur or someone who is essentially taking something of value, their education, their knowledge, and they are depositing it into a, uh, a student, like a bank. Uh -huh. It is this idea where the, the information, what is being transmitted is, is valued. And so that is then has to be absorbed by whoever is taking it in order for it to then be uh, effective, whatnot. Sure. Whereas um, got a stick. Yeah, whereas, whereas uh, Boal sort of flips that on his head and sort of looks at this sort of community, this idea of, of teaching being a community where if a, a professor is able, or if a teacher or someone who sort of holds the power is able to sort of acknowledge that there is a, a power dialectic, then through that understanding, being able to break that down and also be in a position of learning from the students, whereas the students are also teaching. So it's it's just looking at ah, education in a in a yeah. give take context as opposed to just a give receive store context. I don't know. Like it, sure. It, it, yeah. So it, that's it's cool. Sort of, yeah. It's a lot of really I like kind that. of out there, kind of weird, but but very interesting ways of looking at at how we can just yeah. educate and, like and learn. learn and grow. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, for me, for sure. And it's also funny because like I, I started off in a very uh, different, <laughs> uh, like I, I was going to like a, a, a highly competitive BFA musical theater program um, uh -huh. where I was doing, you know, it was ballet, jazz, tap every right. day. Like it was, you cool. know, voice lessons. It was acting. It was you know, basically living in either theater, but dance building for, you know, from 8 a.m. until 11 p.m. Like, uh, and I, and, and for a while, you know, like, I think I started off sort of doing that and then hit a point where I, I just, it wasn't satisfying. I namely, bet. well, namely in the fact that, like, I, I was having all this fantastic training and, mm -hmm and really learning and really growing. And then I would be pulled into meetings by the head of my department being like, okay, Earl, so right now it looks like uh, this, this, and this summer theater stock companies are doing Flower Drum Song and they're doing Miss Saigon. Uh, one of these companies is doing Thoroughly Modern Millie. So there's a couple opportunities for you there. Ah, but like it was, you know, right. and, and God bless the program, you know, like it was a very sort of, business oriented yeah we make actors who get employed and we get and we make actors who 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 work in the industry and and I was very very happy and 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 you know for a while thought that that was the direction that I needed to be going sure and and but you know the the one thing that I don't think they really took into account was that on all the other classes that we were doing like my movement classes and you know, there was so much more expansion towards the creative and so much more uh, encouragement towards, you know, just this idea of not just being a performer who performs, but being a creator, being an artist, being yes. someone who, who, who is able to make work in addition to just, because, you know, performers, there are millions of performers out there. Yeah fantastic who mm -hmm. are just almost you know like like who are who can you know watch a piece of choreography and immediately replicate it who can you know say a thing exactly how it needs to be said you know like there are that yeah. is a that is a, a you know there are people that do that and and it got to a point where I I was like okay I'm, I'm pretty good at it it's pretty great but yeah why am I doing this <laughs> like like it's an important question who who am I doing it for and why why am I always having to you know go out for engineer for Miss Saigon why right. am I always having to be you know like like sort of it, it, it the sort of limits of the industry at the time especially you know I think 
it 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 seemed so bleak as sure. far as like Absolutely. well maybe uh maybe they'll get a production where they'll do some some weird castings yeah. and uh <laughs> you might be able to to and obviously we've come so far because now we have you know like and although it's not like the the pinnacle of an inclusion and diversity, but like you know shows like Hamilton that are yeah. that are significantly more diverse than what have been seen sort of on that absolutely uh, echelon of, thank of God. performance, yeah. And and so it it was one of those things where I had to take a step away. Like I I also took some time away after um uh yeah in in university I I, I encountered uh devising work and making work and writing and and creating sure theater as opposed to just performing theater and it really sort of threw me for a loop in the in the fact that I feel like now and now it's different but when I was younger I feel like a lot of the only training that was available was for performance and not creation sure like I feel like we were all really good at at you know doing scene studies or doing you know like right learning learning dance numbers or learning music or doing you know as opposed to like how about you make a thing yeah. how about you how do you how do you tell this story how do you tell this story as clearly as possible how yes. do you tell this story better like we you know i feel like one of the biggest dearths in 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 theatrical training at the moment is that idea of of how would you make this picture happen you know just this idea of what is yeah. your voice you know and i think yeah. that that it it really took me uh we had uh at, at my my very rigorous bfa musical theater program theater program it was uh um it it took a artist in residency program with a uh it's i, know, I think they're defunct now but they're another sh a chicago company called plasticine okay um uh, and they did they did a lot of like really interesting, really visceral sort of physical uh, avant garde work. And cool. they came in and did a workshop with us for uh, like a semester and worked on a show. And it it changed my life. Really. Um, and then that sort of we had we had a series of guest artists. So we had that uh, that group, and then we had another choreographer. Uh, his name is David Dorfman. Um, I think he is currently like a, he was a professor at Connecticut College, but he is like this, David Dorfman is an incredible choreographer, uh, older gentleman. Um, he present, he just, I think he just presented something at ADA, American Dance Festival and all this stuff. Like he, nice. high, really fantastic upper echelon, like choreographer who yeah. is just really inspiring. But he, he is this just beautifully creative man who is so encouraging and finds uh, just I don't know beauty in 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 places where where people are either not interested in looking or or I don't know he yeah. he has this idea like every every body is a dancing body um, oh cool and he, I like that he himself is this like little like weird like pot bellied um <laughs> man who like one just moves beautifully but he is he comes from a he came to dance from like a, an athletic background oh um and and as an athlete sort of found dance and he's also just like he's this quirky beautiful fantastic brilliant human who is just so inspiring and he whenever he teaches classes um he will accompany himself you know how like dance classes you'll have a, a uh, an audio track or there'll be a pianist for a right. ballet class or something like that so David David is his own accompanist oh. and he will he will strap an accordion what to his body and he will run you through your <laughs> plies and your tendus and your warm-up and he will give you choreography while accompanying himself like the entire thing it is it is the most transcendently like dude uh, yeah it is one of the most incredible experiences of my life to be trained by David to be in a room with him while he is training you while he is playing his little accordion and dancing around and just exuding the most 
palpable the levels of joy and encouragement. I don't know, like I, I, I really, I owe it to him for a lot of things, just unlocking all sorts of things in, in sort of who I am and, and, and the kind of performer that I, that I, I don't know, hopefully I'm, I'm continuing or aspiring to be, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, he's, he's fantastic. Um, as well as just like, you know, he, him and a couple other professors have been really instrumental in sort of uh, just helping me I don't know. I, being a big guy, I'm a, I'm a, I'm six foot three. I'm, you know, that's around crazy. Three, around three hundred pounds. Like I'm a, I'm a big, big dude. Yeah. Um. But, you know, having these people, uh, and and again, like my background is in. I started off in in martial arts and oh, cool. uh, combat and and things. And so, um, going like having someone like for most of my life after you know not really being a a dancer right to then like in my late teens early 20s have someone be like you're a dancer yeah and you'd be like i'm sorry it. i'm sorry what <laughs> what <laughs> like, is accordion you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what are happening? you talking about <laughs> yeah um <laughs> But you know, he I I I really like I went to him, I went to to my professor Gene Kerr, like um yeah, they these people sort of decided, you know, if 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 you can't see it, we're gonna make you see it. That's amazing. <laughs> and you know, I think that's sort of one of the the you know, uh that encouragement and that path, I think, is sort of what uh set me on the way to sort of you know most recently with ghost of Tsushima um you know yeah. being able to to get that body body in with the voice and all you know just sort of be able to to have that experience of using all of those I don't know all, all of the tools that I guess I've got to to help tell tell a story I think it just sort of feels like oh oh this is I guess this is what they were seeing. <laughs> like <laughs> it took me like ten thing. years. Like it's you know like it's taken me uh, way too long to actually realize. Like oh right, this is what, this is what you thought was oh okay it's all it's all clicking. That's I'm glad funny. I'm glad other people can see the, yeah. <laughs> that like way down the line picture. And now I'm like oh this is what you were talking about. Oh, right. right. <laughs> I, I I do love that you were like a punk rock kid, and then you see a guy with an accordion teaching that's pretty punk rock <laughs> when you think about it <laughs> yeah yeah like, and then I'm... i see the threads i like it a lot and the <laughs> the way of learning as well that like there's the learning the technique which is the passing down of like here's my knowledge take it to mm -hmm. teaching you to think and create mm -hmm. i see the threads here earl i see it and i like it a lot <laughs> i'm glad i mean i'm just rambling right now so that's I'm glad what someone's see i'm glad someone's seeing some thread that's what i'm here for <laughs> that's what i do i'm like let me let me untangle this hold on <laughs> oh there's a through line. All right, I'm in. Discovery. <laughs> That's so cool. Like, what was it that drew you to acting originally? Because it's it's a specific thing to get into. Oh, all right. Do you want to hear? Do you want to yes. hear like the real story? Yeah. Oh, do you want to yes. hear like? Do you want to hear the <laughs> realest of real stories? You better believe it. Hold on. Let oh me, man. Let me sit. Let me buckle. <laughs> uh, right okay also, yeah i'm gonna I mean, i'm gonna let i'm gonna preface this this reel of real stories is not uh <laughs> is not as as exciting or like uh artfully uh <laughs> deep all right i'll take my helmet hope, off i was i would hope to do be um <laughs> the the core I, I guess the the main story is uh mm -hmm. when i was watching Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. Yes. Yes. This every great story starts with a warning label and Indiana Jones. <laughs> uh, I was watching Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom, uh -huh. and it had been within a uh, very recent span of time where I had also previously watched Goonies. Ooh, great. Um, also, which also stars. Uh, the same actor who plays Short Round, Jonathan Ke Jonathan yep. Kwan. Yep. Now, imagine Child Earl. Um, I must have been uh, roughly the same age as Short Round, maybe a little younger, uh, when I first watched the movie. And as I was watching the movie, all I could think, literally, the 
only thing that I could think, the only things that were going on in my head were, I could do this. <laughs> I'm cuter than that kid. <laughs> That's I'm, all it takes. I am way, way funnier than that. <laughs> I what is who who how did this kid? How is he working with Han Solo right now? <laughs> Hold on to what your potatoes. Is Come on. this? <laughs> Excuse me. Like and, <laughs> <laughs> so again, I don't know where the, I have no idea where it came from, but it was just this like mo it was this like weird moment of like indignation. <laughs> <laughs> I belong. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. <laughs> that's the that's the other side of representation matters. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. It is. It is. I mean, so. So uh, it was partly, I think that that's the, that's the, the thing that I sort of usually tell everyone because it's, it's very funny, but that's, it's also very good. real at the same time where I'm like, I, I distinctly remember like sitting on my, on the couch in my parents' old like death den in this old house that we used to live in that, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember sitting on, on the couch and, and watch just like, and it's the moment where um, uh, it's in, it's where uh, uh, basically they climb up a thing and then uh, short round, like they like see all of the, the, the stuff, like the, yes. the, the, the uh, the slave children and all of mm -hmm. the state, like, and, and he comes up and like, and, and short round and, and India are like sort of, you've got, they've got the backs of the camera and they're looking out and they have this moment of like, well, we're going to, oh God, I forget the exact, I'm not prepared at the moment, but like, yeah, it's, yeah, that, yeah. it's that moment. I know what that you mean. Silhouette it's the, moment. here we go. Uh-oh. Yes. Moment. Yep. Yes. I hear you. And, and, and it was that like, oh, I could do, <laughs> I could do this. <laughs> I need to be doing this. <laughs> I can look concerned. Uh -huh. <laughs> I want to be going on adventures. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be discovering lost civilization. <laughs> um, that's and, amazing. Yeah. And so that I like, that's probably one of the first, uh, one of the first like, yeah. Moments of like, maybe this is a thing that I want to do. And then, yeah. you know, fast forward, I'm in sixth grade. Uh, I've auditioned for the school, the school musical, and I am playing uh, Mongo, the villain from the Little Luncheonette of Terror. Oh, um, and I, <laughs> and I am loving every good gosh dang minute. <laughs> like those, I think those are probably the moments of like, oh, and oh, it's also that sixth grade role <laughs> of of playing uh, Mongo. Um, as the villain, uh, when I first found out that I was cast as the villain, I hated it. I hated every <laughs> moment of it. I was like, why am I the villain? Why am I the bad guy? This is the worst. And then, and then about like, probably about a couple days before the play was supposed to happen, that moment of like, oh, this is <laughs> fun you're all <laughs> nerds i get to have fun because i'm the bad all, all right you boobs things, all of those things sort of clicking in i think we're we're a combination of things um that's so yeah, funny i feel like that it's it's yeah it's it's a lot of it's a lot of uh things clicking together uh, that's great but yeah short round is my is my short answer of that's what did it <laughs> why, why did you go to that short round <laughs> I love to think that that's the end when you tell people short round, like short, short round. round. Oh, cool. Like you saw him and you're like, yeah, I can do it. You're like, uh-huh. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I told him, I told, I called him up and I said, I'm coming for your job. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Thanks for holding my seat. <laughs> Hold on to your potatoes. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, no. Yeah. I think, and, and uh, I think that was really, that was kind of it. Like really once I, I started actually training and performing and, and like it kind of, it just took, it just took over. Yeah. 
in a in a really and and not in like a, oh god you know like my childhood but like, right, no, yeah. like in, a, <laughs> in a I don't think I would have been happy sure if I wasn't doing that you know like if I like I if I, I I wasn't you know sure it's a it's a thing in you that acting brings out what so what was theater always the goal like what did you want to do was Ooh. there a specific thing um yeah, yeah. I mean I think I, it's so strange like theater was always sort of the yeah the the ideal I think you know for me I think it's always I I will always love live performance sure that makes and, sense and performing with an audience that um, immediate return yeah and maybe yeah. it's just because I'm I'm that kind of person and I I I need that I need yeah. that immediate <laughs> dopamine I need that immediate dopamine hit of, sure. of an audience's reaction <laughs> but you know, I think I think that it's 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 God. I I just started like salivating almost, like just thinking <laughs> about like, oh my God, live theater. Oh my God, oh, having a having a live audience reacting to to me. Do you remember what that was like? That's right. Yeah. It's do you remember? Do you remember the theater? <laughs> right. uh, the immediate <sighs> return upon the joke. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think there's and 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 even more so, if, like to get to like a kind of uh woo woo uh you know yeah thing about performance like uh, just the, the the actual palpable exchange of energy that yes. i believe occurs between a performer 100%. and an audience 100 i think i think that that electricity that energy is is a, is powerfully addictive <laughs> Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like is is intoxicating and beautiful and powerful and and exhilarating. And I think that that there is nothing quite like that. That yeah. feeling. And I know you know you know you know. Like I I think that 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 that's one of the things that I just strive for in general. Like in in my life. Like it, if I can if I can get it, I'll go for it. You know. But yeah. Knowing that also like. I, you know, have loved and fallen in love with with film and with voiceover and you know, just sort of the entire breadth of of performing and, and performance and what that what that allows. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's certainly not what I had, you know, thought of like originally, you know, like when I was right. like, I'm gonna be an actor, you know, like sure. <laughs> envision you know as well as just because like there's so much we i had no idea about uh, in the industry just as far as like even just as far as like voiceover and oh yeah performance capture and just the the worlds that have opened up to me over the last couple of years um i think yeah it's definitely shifted my ideas of of you know what my career what i envisioned my career to be one and then what you know what I envision success and and fulfillment and you know achievement to be, um, yeah. And there's different arenas yeah. now, you know. Yeah, it's it's definitely a big thing, and you know I think I've been lucky enough that that theater has always sort of been uh has been a through line, has been uh, a thing that I've I've done and had and and managed sort of regardless of what country I end up in and regardless of, of yeah uh, sort of what I end up doing. Uh, for the most you know I, I and i've been lucky sort of in that the the people that i've worked with and the people that i like i you know i have a, a pretty uh expansive list of people that i've collaborated and, and worked with but i you know for some reason they keep bringing back <laughs> <laughs> thank god hey. uh, but at least in theater like it's been one of those things where i i know that you know i i'm just grateful for having uh having these these opportunities to to be able to keep i don't know i feel like doing theater also keeps me grounded sure <laughs> as far as i don't know like like i don't think i ever want to be a person that's like not like only doing film and tv and and voice work like right. i think i think again it is that that live theater dopamine hit sure that that, that is completely unique to to that industry you know yeah where I think, it, but at the same time, again, I think it keeps me, you know, grateful and and open, and because you know, I I feel like theater is the the prime example of of people making 
things work. Yeah, like community. Like, yeah, like community. You know, like, and, yeah. and I think, like, 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 e- even if it's uh, staging, so that you know, everyone, everyone is, is, it's a problem that everyone can tackle together, and that that mm-hmm. you know, at least with with productions and things, like, I just feel like there's there's this in inbuilt sense of of family and community and and camaraderie that i i really love and appreciate and those sort of families that i get to have with like cast and crews with shows that i've worked on i think i that's the thing that sort of keeps me coming back because like not that i don't love like film work tv work and you know and and games like But when you're only working with like the same like three people for say three days over the course of a of a production, right? It's not you know it's 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 different from. It's not as in the trenches. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not it's not as it's not as a, a you know you don't you don't get to build that that sort of company uh, repertory, right? Rep, you know, and I think that's another thing where I like if I'm always a person who's like, gosh, I'm so glad it was born in the past. Like, I'm so glad, like, you know, like, oh, could you imagine what it'd be like if we, you know, I'm definitely right. not one of those, like, oh, I was born in the wrong era kind of, like, right. that's not me. Like, also, because, like, if I was born in the, if I was born in the past, like, yeah. my life would be way different. It's, like, I might not have even been allowed into this country. Like, yeah, let's go. it doesn't, uh, that doesn't work. Time travel only works as a Caucasian man. Yeah. It only works for me. Not even yeah. women. Don't even. Try yeah, it. for sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but it's that thing where like, um, I don't know. Thinking about thinking about the like the one one of the things that it, old relics of the past that it, if it could brought be brought back is is the repertory theater system. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, there's something about you know, and as well as just like thinking. And I guess you know, this is me being a, a an actor an actory actor an I actor guess. an actor <laughs> yes 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 but like just the just that the idea of and i was lucky enough that uh i so i i trained in russia i trained and lived in russia for what? a while um you can't just throw that out <laughs> so uh, i did my masters uh I, so i went i went and uh i have my mfa in acting as well um dude but uh, I, no I, I, uh, I I studied at this conservatory in London uh, called East Fifteen, and it's Fantastic. one of the uh, it's one of the College of Drama schools and blah blah blah. But uh, the main particular reason why I, I chose this this postgraduate course, um, among other reasons, but one of the things is that they they have a residency in the second in, in the second year where you spend a semester in Russia. Ooh. Um, and so we spent a semester, I spent a semester in Russia uh, with my cohort uh, studying at the Russian National Theater Conservatory, uh, which is called Gitis. Dude. Um, and it's basic. so in, in Russia, the basically like the main theater school that everyone has heard of is Machat, which is mm-hmm. the Moscow Art Theater School. Right. Which is like Stanislavski, yep. all that. Like, so in Moscow, you have Machat. And then essentially the the rival gang, <laughs> yeah. The rival gang is Gitis. Oh, fantastic! So I so I I, I went to the rival gang school. <laughs> fantastic! You guys got jackets. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one of again, Russia is wild. Yeah, and it's Russia serious. Is wild, acting as well. Wild country, yes. And acting is a serious profession. Yeah, it's like it is revered. One of, it is one of the most bizarre experiences of my life where <laughs> where I I did not feel ashamed Hell yeah. of telling someone of, of you know of meeting of meeting strangers or talking to people and 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 you know I feel like it, it's that thing of like I tell I tell people I'm an actor and especially living in LA like oh I'm an actor oh, yeah. and it's like oh god I hate myself for <laughs> like saying those words yeah, who is it <laughs> where we are like oh god right. yes I'm an actor in LA hi okay. yeah. <laughs> and I'll be it yeah like I I'm fortunate enough that if someone's like oh well have you done anything that I know you yeah, know yeah yes I have shut the fuck up right. but like <laughs> you just pull out the scroll <laughs> yeah. but you mean but, this? <laughs> But you know, at the same time, it's that thing of like, oh, I understand that I'm I'm a I'm a literal cliche right now telling you that I am an actor in LA. Oh, but but in in Russia, it was like 
people were like, oh my goodness, like you, you are studying important things. Like, yeah. wow, you know, or as even, you know, even just in the like, so you, you always have to have your your ID on you in, in Russia. Um, mm-hmm. Fair. Uh, and like you get carded by like, soldiers with AKs like going uh, yep. in and out of the subway like just like oh, definitely randomly. keep it on you <laughs> um, and obviously like there's a whole thing where you we weren't allowed to have our passports on us because the the Russian police will uh steal it or not steal but they'll uh, basically sure. hold on to it and confiscate a bribe it for you to get your passport back and there's literally uh, nothing you can do once they are, are actually holding your passport so literally sure. everyone that we were like don't actually carry a copy of your passport don't actually have your passport on you the school will hold on to those like Smart. don't worry Smart. Like, yeah that's so, a lesson learned oh yeah <laughs> i mean i'm sure they had situations but so you know, in Russia, it was like, hi, I'm a, I'm a student, at G-, you know, because they can see your ID. They're like, oh, you go to Kitis. Like, right. Okay, okay. Like, okay. As well as like the, the best bonus is that if you are, if you have the, that student ID, you can get into any, literally any performance for free. What? Like the goddamn Bolshoi. Like yeah. you can go, like you can go any, you can go to the what? opera, like any of these productions because the the houses are often like just, they're overbooked, but they're also like the people will show up or people will book seats, but not actually show up. There's a whole, like oh. the whole system of, 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 of things is, is a little wild in Russia, but sure. there, I, I have one, I, I have stood in line outside almost, Every, sing- every single show that I went to go see, and I went to go see a lot of shows when I yeah. was living there. <laughs> Why not? I was not turned away because if you're a student, they're like, okay, we, if you can stand or they'll like, they'll like put you where you can't, where your audience is not supposed to be, but they're like, oh, you're a theater student. This is uh, stand there. You, oh, sh- right. This is research for you. Yeah. Short, short, short. <laughs> like, <laughs> right this way. <laughs> this probably breaks fire code, but stand there and watch <laughs> the show. Um, but yeah, the, and, and in Russia, so the way that, that Gitis works, the way that the, these, these conservatories work is that not, like in America and Europe, it, like, so, uh, you know, you have a course that you audition for and you either, there's like 10 slots for 10, you know, for 10 actors for the incoming year for this program. And they take the best ones and they give them those slots, right? Uh-huh. And, and those students become the first, like they're that year's class of students for this curriculum. Oh, in Russia, it's different where like, so, so in Russia, the conservatory has a series of master teachers. Oh, and it's like, it's like within the conservatory, it's its own, they're, they're each their own units. So, really? yeah, so, so you have, um, and, and when you do your audition, you you audition for the schools, but you also audition specifically for your master, your master teacher or your master company. Oh, cool. And so it's like, it's like, um, so in, specifically in the, the course that I was in that we were, that we were training through, um, we were working with um, a master, a master director uh, named uh, Golomazov. And he is the artistic director of a state theater company called Teatro Malibroni. Oh. And they are a repertory state-based uh, theater company, professional theater company in Moscow. The artistic director of this theater company is essentially your head professor. Dude. And the rest of the staff of the company uh, being like the, the te- like some, some of them teach and some of them don't, but essentially that theater company is your school. That's cool. Yeah. So, so students, they, they elect to study with cert, with a specific masters uh. um, as opposed. So it's like, it's like, you know, it just, I'm just imagining the, the, the version of it in America yeah. it would be <laughs> like, I don't like, I can't, it's like, Oh, this one acting teacher Right. Like you, you know, you, you would be at, you would be auditioning specifically for a teacher or it would be like, it would be like, um, say, uh, just cause I know Chicago, um, right. using Chicago references, like say if you were doing a program at, 
um, in Chicago. What's DePaul is a very yep. famous uh, BFA mm-hmm. program. So imagine if the theater program at DePaul, the the faculty, uh, an acting professor is from like the Chicago Shakespeare Theater. There's mm-hmm. an acting the- there's an acting teacher from the Neo Futurists. There's an acting teacher from Second City, and there's an acting teacher from uh, say uh, what's another big company uh, Steppenwolf. Mm-hmm. So instead of, so you would be, so, so you would audition for the school, but you would be trying to get into one of those quote unquote studios. Oh, per se. okay. So, and so you would have to make a choice. You'd be like, I'm auditioning to be in the Steppenwolf track, or I'm auditioning right. to be in the Neo Futurist track, or I'm auditioning to be in the Chicago Shakespeare track. And those people, so essentially from there, they will they pick their incoming classes out of out of other people that have auditioned for the entire school. Wow. And and again, this is crazy. We're not crazy, but like just wild. In, yeah, in that's the fact intense. that they they then that entire your entire schooling uh process, you work specifically with that company, with that master, with the hopes of once you graduate being invited into the company to become an actual member. Oh, but, so okay. So your training, so your so your 3 years of training, your 4 years of training in your in your undergrad is essentially you becoming and learning th- the repertory system that they have. And so sure. again, going back to the whole <laughs> repertory system, which is the thing that I that I am kind of really b- b- wish we we had was, you know, there are there are shows that have been running in Moscow that have been going on for like 20 years. Sure. That they, the companies will do like one performance of, of this show, like every maybe three months or six months, but Mm -hmm. it's, it is, it is the show that they do that. They know that like, like they're their show. Yeah, Yeah. 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 And they're able to like, the way that their their schedules are planned is that you know they have they maybe you know for the season they'll have like eight different shows and mm. each night at the theater will be a different show a different oh. you know, of of those eight will rotate through the repertory as Ooh. their yeah so or it'll be like one week it'll be show a and show b and then the week after will be show c and show d and then the week after will be show A and show D, show B and show C, show C, and then they'll just sort of rotate around. And so, wow. one, the amount of, of just the roles that these actors have to continue to have. Yeah, the on, brain like, space. brushed, yeah, like, like, they, oh. like ready to go. Where it's oh. like, oh yeah, you are, you're doing you know, death of a salesman this week, like you do <laughs> literally two days later, you're doing Lear, like uh, the day uh, after you're doing noises off and then you're rounding out with hello, Dolly. Like that's good your God. <laughs> how do you, the human brain, I don't even I know. understand how it's, that works. <laughs> it's incredible. Like, you know, and, and I think that wow. there's something to be said just about the, the sheer breadth of, of work that, 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 the actors that that are operating in that sort of repertory system are allowed, you know, can get to do like I I experienced a, a like tiny taste of it when I was right. there, um, doing this training and, you know, we were it was weird because we were doing we were working on a production of Three Sisters, perfect, um, and uh, the whole thing the whole program is done as like an exchange between the UK and uh, England and sort of. The, the whole idea was that, so we, the English speaking actors, we had to do a scene at least in Russian. Oh. So we were performing in Russian. Wow. Um, and then the Russian actors would have to do scenes in English. Oh, so we, <laughs> that's fair. So, yeah. So we were doing, we were doing, and God bless the, this company. And, and so we were doing <laughs> scenes where it was entirely in English, entirely in Russian, and then mixed English and Russian, and then oh god, mixed 
Russian and English where the English speaking actors were speaking Russian and the Russian speaking actors were speaking English. And what? <laughs> yeah, it was it was truly it was wild. It was very fun. It was it was it was very it was just a really incredible experience. But yeah. it 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 is definitely one of those things where you're like, all right, my brain hurts now. Yeah, my um, brain hurts just trying to think about doing that. <laughs> Sheesh. No, it worked because you're a great actor. Like, and oh. I don't mean that hyperbolically, like genuinely. I actually, I, I'm glad you also mentioned the, like making your own stuff as well, mm -hmm. because I loved Han. Oh, whoa. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't believe it. you've seen Han. Dude, listen, That's you came incredible. on my show. I do my research. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. That's I'm... one of the many reasons I wanted to talk to you was because of that short. It's oh. beautiful. It made me cry. You did a good oh, job. Oh man, thank you so much. I that that uh, making Han was like a fever dream. It I can I can understand that. <laughs> it, it it sort of came on really quickly. Then um it uh, like we had originally started. We originally wanted to do something for um the APA uh, the HBO APA Visionaries contest that they oh, yeah. that they've got going for for shorts for Asian American uh, filmmakers and yeah. yeah we me and my roommate and, and my friend zach we we were sort of like bouncing around a different a couple of different concepts and then we started yeah this this whole sort of we started talking about just like really just concepts that that are difficult to to articulate in yes. english in, in through culture through all of these things and and so han became this thing where we were able to like one um trying to explain it uh, right. to, to my friends and 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 to people who aren't korean who or who who haven't particularly had a lot of of, of this you know that sort of breadth of 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 experience it it's yeah. it's one of those things where it's it's really tricky to explain it's like it's a it's just a it's just a deep sadness it is it's a, <laughs> it, it, dude i'm right there with you <laughs> um it's but it's beautiful. also beautiful yeah yes. you know it's, it's that thing of like this sadness is something that is not it's it's not a it's it's being able to I don't know, Feel. still acknowledge, yeah, like yeah. acknowledge that, that there is this, this pain and, 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 but also seeing that, that it's, it's necessary that it, it can be fruitful and, and transformative and, and whatnot, but yeah, yeah um, it, it all happened so very quickly. Um, and as well as it's one of those things where it, it was a, a bit of a flash in the pan sort of magic yeah moment um also because the so the building the the building and room that we that we filmed in is mm -hmm. uh that uh max is uh, the sort of main apartment is in um is actually the studio that i used to teach out of oh um, and it unfortunately there's a whole lot of um we managed to finish filming and get everything sorted in a matter of days. Oh. And it was very fortunate because within the, like we, we wrapped filming and then a month later, uh, and this, th that building was a building that uh, many uh, alumni from my crazy hippie Buddhist university, uh, yeah. Naropa had cut when a lot of them have, have come out to LA, uh, that building, it, it was known as Paloma street studios. Um, it okay. served as a hub for a lot of us to like work and teach. And it was also a living space as well. So there's a, there's oh, cool. a, 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 a living area, but, um, yeah. So right after we finished filming, um this was oh god 2017 2016 the the ghost ship fight i don't know if you heard about in oakland there was a a, a warehouse venue mm -hmm. uh known as the ghost ship oh. and there was a huge fire in the middle of a show that they had oh, no. uh, where uh 40 around like 40 people died holy uh, shit or, or not 40 maybe like maybe like 30 i forget the exact Still. numbers but it, yeah it, and it was Jeez. 
it was uh, it got a lot of publicity because of uh, it was a warehouse and there were not like things weren't up to fire code but it was right. like there was a lot of stuff but it was uh, it was also like a, an artist focused sort of live work sure. uh, warehouse space that had been converted and they were doing stuff so one of the things one of the things that happened because of the ghost ship fire was the state of California started clamping down on all live work spaces all oh, all no. warehouse areas all all buildings that were deemed sort of that were multifunctioning as both office commercial and performance spaces sure started they essentially the state started just closing them all down oh man <laughs> um, because they were like well you you don't know how to have a safe party and everyone dies. <laughs> you know? like, sure. And it's, it's, it, there were so many things that were leading up to that. It's, it's really reductive for me to say that, but it, essentially the, the state overreacted and, sure. and wanted to seem like they were doing proactive things to keep people say, you know, and right. then they're like, Oh like the no, these, clean. these, these, you know, um, artists and, you know, right. people who were, they, they weren't using the building correctly. That's why it was on fire right, <laughs> and then right. continued to burn and there were no, yeah. Anyway, the, so sure. essentially that made it so that a whole bunch of restrictions happened. So the building that we were housed in got hit with a bunch of required updates Ah. And because these updates were going to be happening, they essentially it was a either you have to help us pay for it or you can't be here anymore. And it, so essentially that that right. building uh, is no longer. Um, and I don't know. I feel like Han kind of is my like time capsule yeah. love letter to that space because Swan I, song. yeah, just because <laughs> I, I love that space so much as well as like it was i i got to film in it for pretty much free and there it was just go. it's just a beautiful location and venue you know like it's just it the light the light in it is so great and it's like it's this little gem in in or it was this little gem in downtown la like it, hidden in like the 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 garment uh fabric district like yeah. it's it's tucked in and it's uh, uh it was such a magical little place but yeah uh beautiful Talking Beautiful. about Han just gets me all emotional. <laughs> Good. It got me emotional. So that's what you get. <laughs> oh, thanks, it's a, it is a gorgeous piece. And I, I loved it. Uh, so some of my favorite acting to watch is when there's no dialogue. Because oh. that's really, really hard to do. <laughs> yeah. And Han is one of those that I just... And I understand those feelings, having dealt with a lot of grief in my own life. Yeah. So watching it, I was like, yeah, that's... That's yeah. what it's like. <laughs> it's exactly like that. And yeah. Just, you, the way you conveyed it and just the choreography. And again, that's why I'm saying you're such an incredible actor. And oh, I genuinely so mean that because you didn't say anything. <laughs> you know? And yeah. I felt and I saw and like when I found out that it's like your baby, like you didn't just star <laughs> in it, but like that's your thing. It is my baby. Thank you. For, for Han, <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I I'm I'm so glad like it's 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 always been that thing of like, well, you know, it, we, we, we got, we like semi finalists, we didn't get a Hell final yeah. selection, didn't really, you know, but, but as far as like what we were able to make, I'm so proud of it. And so good, happy that it, it got to live it, you know, it had a little festival run. We got a couple of awards and things, which is really, Hell which yeah. is really validating. Cause it's, you know, also it's the first, it's the first film that I had ever made. Right. Um, That's insane. And yeah, I, again, very, very lucky in that the, you know, my, my friends and the the people that I've been lucky enough to surround myself with, I mean, pre pandemic, yeah. <laughs> the people that I'm lucky enough to zoom with now, uh, right, right. but you know, are also beautifully like just creative and, and passionate, like uh, Zach who, who shot most of it and, Ooh, and is, gorgeous. is incredible. Like just the things that we were able to do with, the limited technology that we had and then uh Nihan um her composition yeah. we she's a goddamn wizard I yeah. like she's just a sound wizard but we so we sent her a silent copy and she had seen some of um like the choreography like she'd come to a couple of rehearsals like we'd had a few chats and stuff and she'd seen uh, a bunch of sort of the footage but basically 
she was like, I, I think I've got some stuff, just send it to me. And then over like a period of like 48 hours, three or like three days, Mm -hmm. she had, she just like had scored it. And then was like, here, (laughs) I, I, this is, this is my, my first pass. What do you think? And we were like, what? Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. And we were just like, um, y- thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and I think that like that the soundtrack to it, like it's it's oh man, heartbreak. I could I could not have asked for anything more. Like I I, I was so yeah. Again, and and Gabe Gabe who is is our our editor king. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just I don't know. Just lots of. Uh, I, it's one of those things where every time I watch it or every time if someone brings it up, I don't know, like I, I just get filled with a lot of pride. And, Good. And, that's why I, that's uh, why I brought it up. Uh, <laughs> I was like, you you need to experience this again. I don't know when was the last time you thought about it, but uh, it's. Oh, uh, I, I recently did receive a, uh, a three cent residual oh, <laughs> from Amazon. You know hey, that might have been me. <laughs> That might have been me. Why, thank you very much. You know, I'm was, very glad. I did drop a few dollars of my own income oh, into it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very, thank you very much, sir. That's thank right. Thank you very much. So if anyone wants to know, to get Earl on your show, you have to pay three cents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm real cheap. <laughs> it's quality, you know? It's uh, money well spent. <laughs> I, will, I will cherish those three cents just so That's you That's right. Know. <laughs> That's right. Now you know they came with a gut punch of a conversation as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we both paid money for this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, how many shirts did you go through? Because you oh, did a tuck and roll on a beach. And, yep. As someone who's there also are, made a short film. <laughs> there are three versions of that shirt. Okay. Of the exact same shirt. Okay. Um, we had... Uh, I'm also a sweaty bastard. <laughs> so, so it was that thing where like we had one, one, there was one that's wet. Uh-huh. That is a combination of sweat and seawater that sort of just stayed Perfect. wet. And then there was one that was like always dry. The and, and then shirt. there was one that was like, okay, the back's going to be dirty. We could, it's, it's, it'll be the middle. It's the like middle, not dry, not wet shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it was those you got three levels. that we yep we just kind of it just kept being like uh all right is this the good one all right is this okay we need, okay get the wet shirt back on all right okay so. <laughs> how moist are we right now <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's great it's great wow. i did not know that you were so tall so yeah. that makes me wonder so norio carries a naginata yes how yes, long is that thing it is if you're long. six three, <laughs> like, um, no. it is about eight feet long. Oh. I believe. It Were is you quite swinging that around? A large. Um, I did. So I, I got to swing around a naginata, like an actual, like actual naginata, because I was um doing some training. Cool. Um, with the naginata teacher, before, uh, sort of to build up to to. Uh, working on the game sure um but <laughs> uh i got a long stick a it was uh, Beautiful. <laughs> it was uh <laughs> it was a law lo- it had a, a little weight and a little ball at the Get end it. but it was just it was just a long stick i was a little disappointed <laughs> <laughs> to be completely honest sure. but you know i it's the magic it's, it's the, the magic, magic of 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 games it's the magic of performance capture it's the magic of voiceover it's the magic of all of the things of course but it was it, it was definitely that thing. I, um, uh, Dice Dice has definitely talked about uh, his because he had this uh, <laughs> he had this like plastic uh, like black plastic uh, katana uh-huh. <laughs> that would be <laughs> that was his his prop katana. It was just perfect. It was very very funny all the time. And you know, again, it's that imagination having to do yeah essentially 90 percent of the job yeah yeah was was um, that your first performance capture gig yo yeah absolutely Dude. it's this uh, this is i mean that's the thing like a ghost i don't know how i got it <laughs> <laughs> i mean uh i do. I, I feel very fortunate i yeah i like i it's, it's that thing of like uh, I, I just feel very fortunate in that it's 
the industry is is has all sorts of obstacles and hurdles and quirks and yep. things to to get by and through in order to to be able to to be working uh at Absolutely. that level yeah. and i'm just i'm just very very grateful because i uh before ghost had never really done any sort of video game work i had done a little bit of voiceover stuff i had you know Mm -hmm. uh i'd done an occasional adr thing um but yeah it it, i i had never sort of had the opportunity sort of in that context to to really work on a video game and do sort of you know modeling and 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 performance capture and all that stuff so it was yeah it's been it i'm i just feel so lucky in that um (laughs) One, Ivy uh, Eisenberg, who's the casting director, decided to take decided to take a chance on some weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and she knew. She knew. Yeah, like it's it's that thing where I think uh, one casting directors don't get nearly enough credit uh, for great. for just the amazing work that they do. But, for real. Um, yeah, it was it was one of those things where she she really believed in me and i yeah that's because okay uh I, I feel like i've talked about this in in previous interviews and things and i've talked about it on stream as well but like sure. i i originally read for Khan. oh yeah wow. i i i got brought in first uh to read for for kotun really yeah that would have been different it would have been real <laughs> different i mean and so and that's the thing where like ivy bless her um she you know she and after i had done my audition with her because she i did an ad- initial audition and then she called me back and then had me do another audition mm-hmm. um for con and really like w- you know we we had done it we finished we were talking and sort of in that after like oh we got the take and you know just chatting sure and she was she was really really you know just honest and really really kind but she was like hey um, you did a great job, but I don't, you're a little, I, I like you a little <laughs> too much. Like I, like I, as Ivy, I, I have to be able to feel, uh, like I have to not like you, but I can't not like you. Right. <laughs> and so I, and she was like, I don't, I'm not sure if, 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 if Khan's going to be, you know, the direction that we're going to, going to be going with you, but, mm-hmm. But still, like I, you know, she was really she was like, I, you know, love, love what you've done, love, love the work, love your preparation, like uh, you That's so did cool. it great, like you know, she was she was she so so that. positive, yeah, she absolutely did not, did That's not. Cool. That's great, and and so it was one of those things where like I was like, oh, this is weird, I've never had that happen before, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of emotion oh, at once. Oh, thank ah. you, <laughs> and yet again, I still don't get a job, right? Yeah. Like you Thanks. know, and then. <laughs> And then, you know, randomly, less than a week later, it's like, hey, hi. So <laughs> remember how I told you that 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 I I really liked you, but I couldn't quite see you in this role. Now I found something that is perfect. And I was like, really? Hell She's yeah. like, yes, here it is. Send me what you can as soon as you can. And I was like, all right, sure. And immediately, I think with, with Norio, I... Yeah, I, I clicked. I clicked in a way that that yeah. I, I I feel like is really rare for me, um, in the industry, especially because there's so much. For the most part, I have to, I have to sus. I one of my biggest problems when I get when I get a lot of scripts, um, when I'm getting auditions and stuff is like, I have to suspend my disbelief mainly in that right. like actor Earl has has not become jaded or but like you know sort of being in the industry and and sort of uh, understanding certain things about the business side and, and sort of how decisions are made and casting and whatnot like sort of being able to look at a, a, a casting brief and being like all right so this is I can get behind, you know, like some of the things are like, oh, this thing kind of fits me. Oh, I can see like this part of my type kind of fits here. I can see how, how I could, I could, you know, find my key into this character through this, 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 you know, whereas with Noria, with Noria, I I read the script and I was like, okay. (laughs) Got it. I, I, I know 
you. <laughs> right. I, I clicked. I know him. And and obviously this is again, I think a huge testament to Patrick and Liz and Jordan and the and yeah. the, the writing team for Ghost, um, who are just Geniuses. absolutely fantastic. Um, and I I I am so with so in love with them. Um and uh but they I think were a large reason why sort of the 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 rest of the the supporting cast in ghost are it is so ensemble and and so integral and, and i feel like it's you know i don't think there's really a wasted character among among them you know i agree i i i have this sort of yeah it's 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 sushima's kind of Sushima's own Seven Samurai. Yeah, <laughs> like just the the ragtag group of of humans that end up being the the primary sort of uh, friends of the ghost. I guess right. The team uh, that shows up in the end. Yeah, yeah. No badass. And, and you know, it's again. I feel like when when reading scripts and audition stuff, it's like, oh, I have to imagine or i have to use like oh this is like uh okay we're gonna be uh, you know this character i have to be a bit more like this in order to to see like myself in this character or oh oh i see how like oh this character can can function uh to be this part of you know when i'm whereas i don't know with with when i got the scripts for ghost i i was just in it <laughs> like sure. i was just like oh my god oh no like I, my my <laughs> my sort of analytical brain of like okay well i've got to think about this think about you know like, i don't know sure. sort of the way that my my brain uh analyzes scripts it was it, all of that sort of dropped away and was like holy shit this guy is going through some shit right yeah <laughs> <laughs> i am going through some shit and yeah right. i know i know that like i i yeah. Again, and, and I think it's it's better, you know. I have a brother, I have an older brother. Oh uh, man. Oh so so there's there's connection there. Yeah. Um, uh my older brother, uh my older brother got diagnosed with cancer when I was 20. No way. Yeah, and that like I I have I have faced my brother, my brother's mortality, uh at least a couple times yeah uh in in our relationship and he's now he is fine he Hell is yeah. cancer free he is incredible doing great he is cool. yeah he's doing fantastic but like thank god it's it's, but it's also, one of those things where i i really in just sort of even in the early days of of what and who norio was going to be that connection with enjo is kind of yeah. that connection with enjo has always been there you know and sort of yeah that was one of the the uh, a huge thing that you know i'm i'm rarely able to take situations from my personal life right. and like use them in that like actorly way that sure. you know, people can mm-hmm. um but in <laughs> but with with the situation for Norio, like it was one of those things where like oh yep i i actually have like context context and memories around yeah. you know just around uh it was also uh when i was my my brother had been living away from home and when he had to go through his uh his chemotherapy and and radiation treatments he Mm -hmm. came back he was back at my parents house in chicago and uh i was away at university at the time but when i would come back uh to see him you know it it was he would be so tired and so in pain sure uh oftentimes that we we really didn't even get to spend that much time together because it would be like hey how are you you know like i'd see him in the morning i you know he would go to his appointments and you know it, just deal with yeah Viper's poison life. poison being rushed through his body you know yeah and and then he would come home and it would be that thing of like uh can I help you? Can I do anything for it? And he would just like, he just wouldn't be able to speak. Yeah. Like he'd just be like, I'm cool. Just I'm cool. You know? And, and right. I think a lot of the, the, that feeling of hopelessness. Um, oh yeah. It's sort of the, the knowing that there, that there is someone that 
you literally cannot do anything to help and and oh, I don't yeah. know, there, a, a lot of I I feel like there's a lot of I, I have a lot of connection with Norio and and his relationship with Enjo as well like just in in how it sort of obviously not as high stakes but sure. par- parallel but also, and different stakes that that I I just were were really uh I think beautiful inroads into yeah. a character that that I was able to to find um, that I'm really grateful for. Um, yeah. yeah, that makes so much sense because that <laughs> that that comes through the work. I I felt that when I was mm. watching Nodio and your great monologue about what happened to the temple and stuff like that, and just yeah. it's like this is something else is here. There's like a <laughs> there's 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 something here. That's well, I'm so glad he's doing okay now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? He's he is fine. That's great. He's, I think I think he had his 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 another like because he goes in once every I think like year. Right. Sure. Now to for just for making sure everything is good, but his he his his recent one was a uh, you're free free and clear yet again. So, Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just gotta keep keep on that keep on that train. Absolutely. I I that's I mean. You know, whatever you can use to make the art, and it worked yeah, out. Yeah, I so. mean, yeah, and and that's the thing, and, and obviously, like this is, you know, there's there's so many, there are so many ways for actors and performers to find, oh, of course, that truth. Hundreds of techniques out there. Yeah, to, <laughs> and 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 I think that's the thing where everyone's going to be different, and yep. you know, like, I, you know, back. Back in the day, I would have been like, "Oh, this whole sense memory stuff is really dangerous," and yeah. you know, like, and and you know, it can be, it can be absolutely very, yep. very, very true. Like, I think that there, are, I've been there. It sucks. There are, you there can't are, come out of it. Yeah, there are a lot of things that that can happen that can be really damaging, and mm-hmm. but at the same time, like you know, it, there are uh, there are always. There are always ways to to take and learn from from the things that we know, and yes. hopefully we we can we can take just what we need and not <laughs> exactly. not hold on to too much or, or re-traumatize ourselves in that, yeah. <laughs> in that process. Or... Yep, yep. You got to be able to keep going. Yeah. Because I've learned if you if you go way down that rabbit hole, you cannot come out of it. They they yeah. yell cut. You're still in. It was awful. Don't do oh, it. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> I. I, I don't think I've had, I don't think, I think, you know, I've had to, if anything, I've had to like excuse myself for a couple seconds, you know, sure. but like I, sure. it, it, it does get scared. Just even like thinking about it. It's oh, like, yeah. yeah, it can. It is a slippery slope. Don't do it. Yeah. I don't recommend yeah. it. I, I, when we were done, when we were done, we did like a short film and it was fair, recently after something had happened mm-hmm. and, you know, trying to use that. I'm like, oh, this would be great. Cause I was dumb. And uh, mm-hmm. when they yelled cut, you know, tears are streaming. I was like, this acting is stupid. Why are we even doing this? <laughs> Why did I do this to yeah, myself? Just, I understand just holding the director and both crying. I'm like, this is so dumb. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't do that. But the, I, I do. I think that's really beautiful that you're able to use the love for your brother to bring this character to life because that made Norio beautiful. Yeah. You know? It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you How so long much. did you work on that game? Oh, um, many, usually it's a while. <laughs> many years. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I, thought. Um, I, I don't remember the exact time that I, I, it was, it was, I think it was like 2017, 20, mm-hmm. yeah, it must have been 2017 when I found out I, when I got cast. Wow. Um, Cause it was, it was, a little bit after Dice had gotten cast, right on. Um, and because Dice was like um, in the whole process, Dice was there um, that for makes sense. us. Chemistry, like, yeah, essentially mm-hmm. chemistry and all and all that stuff. Um, sure. And so I, I had yeah, I I had met Dice. I think the first time I met Dice was my was my final. Uh, my final audition, I guess. That it makes been, sense. Uh, yeah, and this one, this one was the one where we were we were at the volume and mm-hmm. um, Nate and Billy, like they had they had uh, and Jason were there. We we they they had they had us do all sorts of stuff and um, nice. Lots of just you know like <laughs> lots of T-pose, stuff that T-pose. I yeah yeah well like <laughs> I personally I'm just like oh we're just hanging out in a rehearsal we're basically just doing weird creative development like 
rehearsal pre-rehearsal stuff of like uh yeah walk walk around the space like you know like i'm really good at this right <laughs> here's some glitter see what you he want does me with to it. mill and see yeah, yeah like <laughs> You want me to fill the room? Why, certainly. Yes, right. <laughs> you just tuck and roll and lay out like a starfish. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just one of those things where where they were, yeah, the whole day was really kind of bizarre and serendipitous. Um, sure. Because can we hang out with her all for long periods of time? Yeah, like it was, <laughs> that was kind of that's kind of how it started, you know. And it started off, and, and Dice came in, and we we did a we did like a, an improv. Nice. Um, I'm still not sure if we're allowed to talk about it sure. or whatever, but like, that's yeah. Okay. So we so we did we did some 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 little improv things, uh, and then that sort of ended, and then it just turned into them being like, "All right, Earl." Um, could you uh, could you could you walk uh, across the volume? Um, but uh, could you could you do a? Uh, we just want to see it in a light jog, and then could we see it if you were sneaking? Um, oh. well, can you can we see what it would look like? It just all <laughs> sort of, we just it was okay. <laughs> first that, yeah, it was just one of when when that finally happened. I was just like, all right, uh, great. <laughs> I sweet. I, I can move. I can do this. It's just it's probably gonna be real. All right, this is what you want. So, <laughs> you asked for just, this. <laughs> yeah, there there was a good chunk of the of of that final audition where it was literally just me uh doing various stupid human things yeah. <laughs> and being like <laughs> Is this how you like it? Like this? <laughs> is, is this part of this? <laughs> is, is this, this happening? <laughs> oh yeah, we're getting great footage. Yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. Yep, keep going. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Yeah, but that it was, it was, it was definitely a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, it 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 was it. I the one thing that I do remember is how immediately calming dice was yeah for me like and, cool. and for when we when we got actually started um and going right like when we actually like just the way i don't know it was just this really we we clicked i think and you know and we were i'd say pretty good friends now, yeah. but i can see um, it i can see it <laughs> uh yeah like it was just sort of this thing where we we like had this moment of sort of clicking and and i think really you know i uh, he is every part is responsible for me getting cast. I think sure. <laughs> that I, uh, you know, and I, I'm just really grateful that we we were able to to sort of find each other in that in that audition, you know. Yeah. And and I think that that really, yeah, that sort of started it because we I I didn't know Dice at all, hadn't met him at all um, mm -hmm. before before working on Ghost. The funny thing is. Uh, the really, really funny thing is that uh, Dice had known my roommate at the time oh. uh, for a long time because they did their uh, UCB 101 together. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so such, such a bizarrely tiny world, um, what? LA. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Um, yeah. And so it was That's this nuts. thing where where I had met, like, like, you know, Stephen was, we, I, my, my room was, we were just talking and then I had sort of mentioned to him that like, oh, I, I, I was working with this guy named Dice. Uh, he's like, oh, what, what's this? I know a guy named Dice. Like <laughs> I, specific I, name. Yeah, yeah. He, and that's the thing where it's like, Dice isn't like, like playing Dice. It's like, oh no, his name's Dice Gay, but you know, he goes by Dice. He's like, what? Like, there's okay. only one of those Where's, in California. Yeah. <laughs> But like, it, yeah, he was, he was just like, wait, is he like basically described Dice and then was like, but did he work for Circus? I was like, yes. He's like, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> like, it was just a very funny uh, LA, six degrees of LA. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. What When you're looking back on it, do you have like, is there a scene that you think of that was like challenging? Because it's, oh. I mean, it's, 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 good work that like takes work Thank you know you. um yeah there's well i will say on a on a purely just logistical mm -hmm. uh basis the final 
my last scene uh where i see enjo yeah um, not to do not to spoil too many things if you all haven't played ghost of Tsushima, but essentially that that whole scene was really uh, yeah. just logistically difficult mainly because we were doing that whole thing without the actor for Enjo. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> Imagination, what you got, Earl? <laughs> yeah, so it was it was me and Dice. And obviously there's not that much dialogue sort of without sure. him. And it's mainly just sort of holding space and being able to to work around this person right. in the room <laughs> i mean it, yeah. it's kind of like the big elephant in the room literally sure. <laughs> like, <Sure. laughs> like, it was like okay now this elephant just is your brother yep Enjoy. oh okay cool all right not well, how i pictured him <laughs> and scene <laughs> like um but you know i think that that one was that one was probably the most uh just just because of that and and sort of the like i hope this works because yeah. there's not a person here and i'm yeah. just using up body okay right. <laughs> um but yeah i think that's that's that and then like yeah i would say probably that one the other like you know really there weren't really that many challenges i sure. think if anything my uh norio went through many changes interesting um, throughout the process mm -hmm. and so uh, I think that might have been my like it, it's it was difficult, but it was also like my favorite sort of thing of of just sort of tracking the evolution of oh, yeah. sort of what who Norio was sort of at the beginning where I wasn't involved. I you know I it was very little sort of who is this who is this person as a real person but who is right. this who is this character and then sort of as my casting and then involvement and sort of the process continued sort of the the realization of like no who is this person who is this human being who is this yeah. individual that makes up norio because there were a considerable amount of changes that went through just in like from my background to my profession to my life like there were a lot of details that that oh, cool that you know went through a couple of different iterations in order to finally settle on on the norio that we that that you all see yeah um and it was you know some of it was cultural some of it was just like figuring out how how this sort of character fits into the greater the the greater story sort of I, right. I think one of the things that that we started seeing and that you see in the game that i i find most interesting about jin and norio's relationship is that they it's one of the only relationships where there is a genuine in my opinion there's a genuine give and take yeah as far of as far as like understanding and affecting each other like it's uh a I lot of Jin's, a lot of Jin's relationships are a lot of either learning or adapting or understanding or synthesizing uh, mm -hmm. knowledge that that exists elsewhere. Right. You know, and but we, I feel like with Norio, Jin, Jin's relationship with him, it, it's it's a bit more symbiotic, or a bit, it's a bit more. There's a bit more of a of a frequency loop that happens that they're both able to recognize. I find yeah. in in sort of how each of their personal struggles are reflected in the other's personal struggles and, and sort of as, as well as how they're able to sort of use parts of their relationship and and things that they learn from their working relationship as Jin and Norio as the you know guardians of Tsushima yeah. to then how that translates into Jin's conflict with you know the Khan and his family and the people and then Norio's conflict with you know the the monastery the the monks his brother right. like all of that stuff and and like i yeah i i just i'm i'm so grateful <laughs> that, yeah. that these that these relationships you know with these side characters aren't just aren't just devices sure you know, aren't, aren't just like ah, i need a person to you know like to to fill the gap from here to here i i need a right you know placeholder i need a you know it's not that it's like no these are people these are yeah. individuals these are characters that that live and learn and and affect each other and are able to you know sort of help each other grow through and, and process this 
you know, harrowing time that they happen to find yeah. themselves in. For real. And like connect. And it's it's, yeah. a, it's a beautiful story, beautiful characters. And my God, an incredible cast. Because you need something, <laughs> you need actors of your caliber across the board to tell that oh, kind of story. You. And I think, so. I think it was beautiful all around. It's a beautiful piece of art. I'm, I'm glad I get to be on the other side of this to experience it. <laughs> so thank you for everything that you did. It's be- a gorgeous game. Oh, gorgeous thank story. You, thank you, Brian. You, all of it. No, stop. No, all of it. No, I'm, all of it. Listen, I'm starting to flush. I don't mean any of this. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, we've been talking for almost two hours. This has really? been a oh blast. God. So before I let you go, uh, mm-hmm. where can people find you online? <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, you can find me at uh, my website is rltkim.com. That's just my, my that works. After website. And then uh, on Twitter, I am Earl of Sandwich. Beautiful. Uh, and on Twitch, I am Earl of Sandwich as well. But I'm Earl of Sandwich with a T on Twitter. Earl of Sandwich. Ooh, the because Twitch someone, version. Yeah, because <laughs> there's an extra T for Twitch. Think of it like that. But it's someone on, on Twitch already has earl of Uh, sandwich without a t that's fair and yeah it's that thing of like well uh, 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 okay i guess i guess you can have it but i fine i'll add a t but yeah so there's an extra (laughs) t in on twitch (laughs) i love it i love it Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.